Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from HowToDrawComics.net, and in today's video, what I'm going to be talking about is how to balance value and details within a comic book illustration to make it appear more readable. And the way in which I'm going to explain that to you today is through a critique that I did for my brother Corey Barton's comic book, Kozor. Now, this is one of the illustrations from his upcoming book. I believe it's issue two of Kozor. And uh, as you can see, it's a really great looking illustration. Lots of detail, really great subject matter. You know, it's kind of like a horror, uh, horror fantasy comic. Something that you might see in Dark Souls or uh, the Berserk uh, comic book manga series. But... One of the main problems with it is that it has so much detail there and so much rendering going on that unfortunately it's not as readable as it could be because when you start adding in detail and value without properly balancing it out in a way in which you're able to lead the viewer's eye around the image so that they can take it in so that it's visually digestible, what you're going to find is that it instead just flattens out. There's no depth within the artwork or it's simply confusing and disorientating to look at for the viewer, which is certainly the last thing you want when it comes to comic book illustration since it's a visual medium because if your viewer can't make out what's going on in a single panel, they're certainly not going to be able to understand what's happening within the the visual sequential narrative overall. And so this is something that really has to be addressed. And it's a problem that many artists run into is this, this lack of balance within the black and white values inside their comic book art. And so what I've really done here is I've tried to make sure that the characters within this illustration are standing out a little bit more to make them look more obvious. Now, before this, Corey was actually going to leave the background as just pure white. And he believed that by doing that, he would be able to get that main character, the one with the skull and the giant brain thingy at the back there, to stand out a little bit more. And... Yes, it did stand out, but it also didn't really flow in and fit in with the overall illustration. It didn't really set a mood or a, a, the vibe that he was going for in a way which was immersive enough. It kind of took you out the illustration and, and broke that suspense of disbelief. You know, when it comes to backgrounds, especially within illustrations that are this complex, you want to try to establish a good, solid mood by pulling the viewer into a world that is fully articulated within the background. And if you can do that, you know, that's really where the power of backgrounds come from, is immersing the viewer, really pulling them into the world that you're you're conveying the story within. And so what I decided to do, just as I was kind of going over this and, and kind of doing a bit of a draw over, I guess, to, to give him some feedback, is I went in and I started placing in more darker values within the background there behind the creature that's been captured by these, these fairy pixie characters. And... You know, at first, I, I wasn't exactly sure even how to approach this myself, just because it wasn't something that I would had been working on. I was kind of coming in at it from a different, completely different place. Um, but as I zoomed out, I began to see where the the new values needed to be added in and where the current ones had to be adjusted. And so I started adding in a bit more black to the background, and ultimately, this will become completely black almost. And I'll add in a rim light around the dark side of the creature just to really get that pop happening. But more than that, what needed to happen was an increased level of readability for the creature itself. And the reason that it wasn't quite reading super clearly is because the left side of it, where the light beam is actually casting down upon the creature wasn't illuminating the forms within it on that side of the creature enough to really suggest the, the the various aspects of the creature that needed to be lit in that way. Because that's the thing, the, the amount of detail and the values within it are going to be determined by the lighting setup within the illustration, how bright that light is, where it's positioned, um, even what color it is to an extent. Because if it's a dark light that's, you know, maybe a, a darker hue, say a blue, then depending on the intricacy of your line work and, and whether or not you leave it up to the colorist to take care of this, you may actually want to add in just a, a really subtle overlay of rendering to darken those values a little bit. 
So it's it's really a matter of balance when it comes to this stuff, particularly white and black values. And when you are able to balance them, what that creates is contrast in just the right areas of that illustration, which is exactly what you're seeing me do here. So now in the background, what I'm attempting to achieve is, again, a lower value to make the creature pop out a little bit more. But something's not quite working right here for me. There is still, especially if you look at the navigator window over to the right hand side of the screen here in Photoshop, you'll notice that there's still some confusion about where the, the character's head ends and where the background begins. Okay, there's not enough separation there. And that's really what you're trying to do. You're trying to separate the different elements within the illustration so that they pop a little bit more, so that they're easily able to be visually made out. So essentially what I've done is I've zoomed out and now I'm I'm able to see from a further away distance whether where the different elements within the illustrations are blending together and illustration rather and where they need to be separated more and so by adding in that black background that thick black background around the creature and then the, and then the rim light on the dark side of the character what that does is it essentially outlines the character and you can see now that it's much more obvious. You can see the shape, the silhouette of the creature clearly defined, and it's all through the use of those values. Now, of course, we've got the movement in the background happening. There's a little bit more visual interest there, and the black values within it are causing the pixies to stand out as well, the ones that are kind of, you know, wrapping their chains around the creature and, and kind of pulling, pulling on them. So now what I'm doing is I've kind of done everything that I want to do with this critique. So now I'm just kind of highlighting the areas and, and the changes that I've done for Corey so that he can go back and apply these. You know, we're often critiquing each other's work. I'm always asking for his advice and feedback on my own. So this is, uh, this is something that really comes in handy when you've got uh, two artists who, uh, you know, kind of work in the, in the same medium. It's really, really great. You know, I catch up with him every second weekend or so and, and we talk about this stuff and I review his artwork in person a lot of the time. But this was a great opportunity to kind of go back and, and give him some advice, a, a draw over that he could use to, to really increase the amount of impact that this awesome, incredible illustration had to offer. So that's about it for this very short video, but I did want to highlight the importance of value and making sure that there's balance between the values and the details within your illustration. And uh, the most important takeaway from this, I would say, is just to make sure that as detailed as your illustrations may get, try to have it so that each and every subject within that illustration is readable, that none of them are kind of blending into the others. They should be easily able to be made out by the viewer's eye. So with that said, thanks so much for watching. I hope you got a ton of value out of this video. And until next time, keep on creating, keep on practicing, and I'll catch you in the next video.